Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayers. If you'd like to follow with a service sheet, you will find these at dedhamandardleyparishes.org.uk. On the homepage, look for service resources and in the list find Morning Prayers from the Northumbria community. My name's Susan and I'll be leading our prayers this morning. You might like to have your Bible open at Hebrews chapter 10. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord, have mercy. And do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ, have mercy. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. So our scripture this morning is from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 39. Hebrews chapter 10, beginning at verse 19. This is headed up, a call to persevere in faith. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is, his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and to having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as unholy the thing the blood of the covenant that who has treated as unho as an un let's start again sorry how much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the son of god underfoot who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them and who has insulted the spirit of grace for we know him who said it is mine to avenge i will repay and again the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Remember those earlier days after you had received the light, when you endured in a great conflict full of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. 
So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And my righteous one will live by faith and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. So whenever we see a passage with the word therefore, we know that we've gone through a lot of arguments previously and we've really looked at the difference between the physical and the spiritual temple. And now the, the writer to the Hebrews is really asking us uh, to take on board everything that we've understood this far and know that we now have a very serious call on our lives and we need to be faithful to that calling and we need to persevere in that calling. Everything that has needed to be done in order for us to have full access to God has been done by Christ Jesus and so we can have confidence and come boldly into the throne room of grace and that truly is a wonderful gift to us and one that we shouldn't ignore or put aside. And I think verse 24 is very important in these times that we should be spurring one another on towards love and good deeds. Uh, we're in a difficult time and difficult situations, so we really need to take on board the fact that we need to be encouraging one another. Um, we may not be able to meet together physically sometimes, but we certainly can meet together on Zoom and... Um, what's the other one? well you know all the other media uh, platforms that we have in order to see each other and speak together and as I was finishing reading this two or three times to myself I found myself bursting into a song that my children used to sing uh, quite a lot to and we had very many performances of this with my younger son dressed up as Elton John on his uh, pretend keyboard and my older daughter um, pretending that she was Tina Turner with Ruth doing a fantastic backing act. Um, and it was simply the best. And I actually got out the lyrics for it because um, we used to have a karaoke machine at home. And what I used to do was take some of these amazing love songs. And I've always believed that in the heart of all these love songs is really a calling out for that perfect, pure love that only God can give us. And we mistakenly think that we can find it in another human being. And I used to change a few words in these love songs and then we would uh, write them out again on overheads and sing them as praise songs at church parties. And I looked at the lyrics of the Tina Turner one and I just want to read you just a few lines to give you a feel of what I mean. I call you when I need you, my heart's on fire. You come to me, come to me wild and wired. Oh, you come to me, give me everything I need. Give me a lifetime of promises and a world of dreams. You speak the language of love like you know what it means. And it can't be wrong, so take my heart and make it strong. You're simply the best, better than all the rest, better than anyone, anyone I have ever met. And I think that for me sums up what we've been reading about in Hebrews that you will never find anything better than Jesus Christ. You will never find anything better than the love of God and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And so I commend you to his care today and just want to pray over us all. 
Lord, the writer of Hebrews knew that you were better than anything that had gone before, that you were the best. And so, Father, we want to acknowledge that this morning. We thank you that your word is living and true and can make such a change in our lives as we persevere in our faith, as we grow in our faith, as we study your word so that our faith increases. And so I pray for each one of us this morning that we will ask you to grow that faith, to give us a gift of faith where we might need it, Lord, for the work that you have for us to do, that we would as a fellowship encourage one another to persevere, to equip ourselves and to equip each other for the work of the ministry. And so, Father, I thank you for your love and faithfulness to each one of us today and pray that we would be a light wherever we go. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's finish with our canticle. Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks into me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me on my left and my right. And so we finish our time together with a blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm, and may he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And I hope that you will have a blessed day today and that you will come back indoors and join us at five o'clock for another time of prayer together. God bless you all. See you later. <laughs>